Hey everybody, welcome to Business Battery Pack Live Sessions. I'm your host, Davion. My co-host, Frank Dew, my usual partner in uh, crime, is not with us today. But uh, we've got a special guest on the line. Um, have you ever had a lot of work to do, um, computer-based work, things that tasks that you needed done, and you just didn't have the time to do it yourself, and you couldn't find anybody capable of doing it for you? Well, uh, our guest today has built the solution for that. Um, his business is called vworker.com, and he's going to talk to us about what a virtual worker is and how he built a business around that. So, give it over to you. Good afternoon, Ian. Good afternoon, Davian. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It looks like we've got Frank right here. He's here in spirit. <laughs> so I think he's listening, but uh, he, he won't be able to talk to us. Yeah, it doesn't um, move as much as he normally does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's feeling a little sluggish today. That's cool. Um, but he may chat us some questions in the uh, in the chat box. So um, I want to uh, give everybody a chance uh, to hear what it is that you do and what your business is. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and how you started uh, your business? Sure, sure. So, uh, I mean, you, you gave a great summary of what the business is. So basically, we just connect together businesses and, and entrepreneurs looking to hire people but don't want to bring on a full-time person and don't want that extra expense. So, you know, we, we save them sometimes 60 to 80% by hiring someone remotely. So it's a good deal for the person hiring them, and it's a good deal for the person working because they can work from home and they can set their own hours and do all that sort of stuff. But uh, as far as how I started it, it was uh, it was in 2001 that I started it, and basically I was uh, I had another website called Planet Source Code, and uh, this is like a, a programming site for computer programmers, and they trade source code, which is like the building blocks for programs, and. Uh, what was happening was these programmers were always coming to me and saying, "Hey, Ian, you know, can you help me program this? Can you help me program that?" And that was actually my job. I was a uh, a software developer, but I just didn't have the time to to handle all that. And so I was like, "Oh no, I'm sorry." You know, it was like the gritted teeth. You know, I was like upset every single time. I'd have to say, "No, I don't have the time." No, and I said it probably about fifteen or twenty times, and then I thought, you know what? there is a uh, an opportunity here if I could somehow connect these people with what they need but do it in a safe way because if you connect them to someone random it would be a complete disaster it need to be like guaranteed and there would have to be some sort of safety mechanisms and and things like that I think it could really be something big so that that's basically how it started so um, so you were a software programmer you were doing code right? mm -hmm. and then yeah. you, you you decided that it was too tedious for you and you created virtual worker um, other than your own problem you know solving your mm -hmm. own need how did you know how scalable the business would be how did you know that hey you know all of these people will want to use this well I mean I guess it's one of those things you don't know for sure until you, you try it I mean I thought theoretically maybe people would want to do it I thought well you know, if I could make it work for programmers, I could probably make it work for writers. It's not that much different, or hiring a designer or something like that. But I didn't really know. I had to. So it was one of those things where I was like, well, maybe I can just try it out and see what happens. Yeah. So very quickly, like within just a month, basically, yeah. I created the, kind of that first version. I just had like a little laptop and had like a little prototype, created it, you know, and just put it out there just to see if anyone even want, was interested. And okay. uh, thankfully, they were. I want to talk specifics. Um, first, um, what? How did you advertise it? Did you use, you know, what was there a specific website you used? Did you use Google? Did you use Craigslist? I mean, how did you get the word out? Yeah, that's a good question. So back then, actually, this was 2001. So this was actually before Google started doing their ads, AdWords, and so the the thing before then was called Overture, and. Uh, yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. It was like the predecessor. So um, yeah, so that's where that's the easiest way. It's like okay, nobody's heard of us before. Let's at least get the word out on these keywords and uh, get them going. So you know, started advertising with that. Started um, what other things were we doing at the time? I don't think we were doing emails or anything like that. That was a little bit too expensive for us. But yeah, main, mainly the search engines. So you said the keywords. How did you know what keywords and what keywords did you, you know, what were your first set of keywords? Mm. 
That was so long ago, but you know, I remember, I remember the big thing was just that I couldn't afford a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I'm just a startup. I don't know if it's going to work. I don't want to invest my life savings in it. Mm -hmm. So I remembered uh, basically trying to pick the keywords where a lot of people weren't there. So I'd go in the, the most obvious ones. People were there, and they were bidding them way up. Mm -hmm. So. I was looking kind of for these kind of little niches where I thought, oh, well, no one's really thinking about that right now. Mm -hmm. And that's where I concentrated. And what were the first niches that you discovered? What did you find? So uh, the first one, so since the site back then was just programmers, mm -hmm. I picked what was one of the, the popular programming languages back then, which was called Visual Basic. Right. And I started targeting all these things in Visual Basic for all these different things that people would want to program. Okay. All right. We're going to we're gonna come back to that in a second. But I want to... Um, I want to give people a visual of what was your life like before you started your own business? I mean, were you working oh. for someone? Um, just overall, what was it like? Describe it to me. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was a consultant. I was working for someone else. So, um, you know, and I, and I liked that. But at the same time, you know, I would, I, I would, I would be working in a big company and I'd say, hey, you know, I have this great idea. I think we should do this. And they would, you know, put it through the committee or, you know, my boss would raise it to whoever and a lot of times they'd be like, well, you know, that's a great idea, but we can't do it because of this or that. And it was really frustrating. Mm -hmm. So, and it happened a lot of times. And I would just look around me and think, oh, if I was in charge, I could just do it so much better. So uh, <laughs> I got a chance to prove that, you know, you, as, uh, you know, don't always make perfect decisions just like anyone. But mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I wanted to be in that situation where at least I could try the mistake or try to do it, and if I made mistakes, you know, that would be my own, that would be on me, mm -hmm. but uh, at least I would have more control. So I was always kind of looking to see if I could find some sort of side business that, you know, could support me. Okay, and so you found that. So um, coming back to the, the keyword search thing, once you expanded, and I, I, what was your first thing that you did um, other than programmers? I mean, how long did you stay with? just catering to programmers and when did you branch out? For a while, probably about two, two and a half years. I, I read a really good book called uh, Crossing the Chasm which uh, by Jeffrey Moore and what it talks about is the idea that so many times entrepreneurs kind of spread themselves out. It's like you try one thing and maybe it doesn't quite work but then you try something else and you try something else and, and it's great to be flexible and you have to be flexible because nothing ever works the first time. But so many entrepreneurs just are kind of like all over the place. So his idea is he calls it the bowling alley. It's like you pick your, your target pin, what you want to knock down. And you do everything that you can to knock that pin down. And, and if you can actually knock that target market down, that gives you entry into the, the adjacent target market, and kind of like a bowling alley. So I wanted to really get programming down before we started moving into the other things. So I took the time to do that. And it did help because then once we actually had a reputation there, then things that were kind of related to programming because a lot of times people hire a programmer, but then they need to get like a designer, someone that can like create a logo or, you know, things like that. They're like, oh, well, I just picked up my programmer there. I might as well, you know, get my designer over there too. So it really helped us kind of move on to these other areas. Okay. Let me ask you this. How did you get, um, how did you find your first V workers and, and, and what did you do to convince them that you were a reputable service and that you can find them work? How did you connect yeah. the two? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. I mean, it's tricky because if you have, if you don't have enough V workers, it doesn't matter how much business you bring right. in. Right. Yeah. Um, so fortunately I was starting just with programmers. Mm -hmm. So I had that website, that plant source code website. So I used that to the max. I was like advertising on there. I, I was putting, I was pushing. I was like, hey, you guys need to, you want to make some money doing programming? Come over to this site. And I just was using it every single possible way I could imagine to send traffic over. Did you have any formal um, system in place for doing that? Like, did you have like, you know, the email list marketing and um, pop-up ads or banners? Did you, you were advertising, but did you have anything else? Yeah. So okay. So it, yeah, it was it was all the above. So like there were banner ads. There was like a newsletter that goes out to them every day with different programming code. So there would be an ad in there that they would see. Um, yeah, pretty much wherever I could, I I tried to just say, hey, there's this new thing out here. You need to check it out. Okay. So with what was the 
you said within what your first week or two you had a lot of you had business you had customers at least some uh, business okay. yes <laughs> okay all right okay I mean hey some is better than none and, and a yeah. lot of people will spend you know years and years planning and putting things together and never attract the first customer that's um, true yeah so with that said um can can we talk about how is it how is the the revenue generated through your business do you make your money through advertising do people pay um, for being a, a virtual assistant or is it just the customer that needs the skill done so uh, yeah we have competitors and they all have different models our model is that we don't get paid unless the work is successful so we don't charge the virtual workers like a, a monthly fee or something to join we don't charge the employers to post but if the project is successful then we take anywhere from 6.5 to 15 percent depending on the services that we're offering them so 6.5 percent if we're offering just a minimum service and 15 percent if you know they're gonna get arbitration and you know the full the full deal okay yeah there's so, the site right there yeah we put brought the site up it shows that you've been listed in Inc 500 entrepreneur Wall Street Journal Business Week Forbes so um, you, you, you you got recognition I also saw um, the uh, interview with you on uh, the CBS station, I believe it was, oh. right here. Mm -hmm. So we got some of that. Awesome. Yes, that was definitely some good coverage there. When did when did you uh, do this? So that was uh, 2010. So that was two years ago. Okay. Still pretty far into V workers, you know, life because the whole thing was started in 2001. Right. It definitely took a long time to build it up to the point where it was even something that people would want to talk about on TV. Right. I got you. Um, so let me ask this because um, let me see if I can bring me back up on the screen first. I can uh, see you. Okay. I think I can't see myself, but okay. Um, we don't need to see me anyway. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we got Frank do. Um, let me ask you this, because right now, uh, you know, we're in a situation in our country where um, there's a big debate, a hot debate over, you know, jobs, and our elected officials are all promising that we're going to stop sending jobs overseas and bring jobs back to America. Um, does any of that, as far as, um, does, does it play into your, your mind at all? Um, as far as creating competition for maybe people that will be here in the United States? It, it's both. I mean, it, um, I, I don't think it's like a simple thing you could say it's one or the other. So on one hand, you know, the technology like VWorker does allow people who want to go outside the United States to, to go there because it, it really shrinks the world. But at the same time, it also allows people that are in the United States who would not have an opportunity to have access to these people who have access to them too. So we actually, the United States is a Big, it's probably about a third of our uh, workers. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and if you ask me, there are it is a legitimate thing. You know, how is the U.S. going to compete in the future? You know, uh, there's some things that can't actually be outsourced very well to other countries. Um, writing is one of them. For example, it's like you know, if you have a native you know, speaker of English, you know, someone that that understands it and grew up with it and and knows the idioms and the different uh, things that are very unique to the way we talk. You know, they can write very well, and you get someone who's from another country that's kind of pretending to do it. Doesn't sound very good usually. So, right. writing is a great example. There's all sorts of things that basically, uh, really, the Americans are 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 best for. So we cater to all those things. Um. So, and I and I know all the advantages. Um. You know, of of hiring a virtual worker. Um. But what I was curious with is if. If I'm an entrepreneur, um, I'm imagining because it's more competitive. How would that affect me? Does it make the marketplace a lot more competitive as an entrepreneur, or does it make it better as an entrepreneur because now I have all these opportunities I didn't have before? Yeah, well, it definitely makes it better. Now, are are you an entrepreneur that's trying to start your own business and you just need the resources to help you? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're kind of what you're thinking of? Well, or are I'm, you the I'm entrepreneur trying to way. get work? Well, well, I, I'm imagining that if I'm someone that wants to be a V worker, hey, I just want to work from home at my computer. It's it's plenty of opportunity. Um, yes. But if I'm some sort of specialist, like hey, I'm a designer or I write code, well, now I've got all these other people to compete with. So yeah, yeah. you know, both sides of the coin. Um, yeah. 
but I can imagine you, you know, your business model is set up to profit from that either way. You are kind of the toll booth. Yes, we are the toll booth. We are, and it can be difficult for those people who are starting out, like yeah. you're talking about, that entrepreneur the first time. It's like, whoa, you know, I'm used to just being myself. Now I'm competing against maybe like nine or ten other people, maybe, you know, and, and they're all in different parts of the world. Uh, what we, What I tell people, it's like the ones, there are some people that start off on the site and they take forever before they win their first job. And then there are other ones that just like they explode. They just come on and they're you know they're winning four or five jobs in you know just the first week, and then they you know they're exploding after that. Right. And really, the key is their communication skills. A lot of people kind of come in and they just want to work, and that's great. That's good. That, that's that's important. But if a person can't present themselves and engage the client and show that they're interested and you know do all those things, then usually they kind of have trouble. So. You know, if someone's asking me, do you think I'm cut out for it? I'll tell them, well, you know, it kind of depends. Are you the type of person that just wants to receive a bunch of work and you know just kind of just do it? You know, it probably is not for you. But if you're the type of person that is fine with being, you know, interactive with people and talking with them and and talking about what you're going to do, you know, then it can be very good. Right, right. I was just reading an article that talked about, um, you know, a few of the things to look out for when dealing with virtual workers, and one of the things. Well, one of the, the the most important thing is people being honest um, and not trying to uh, you know game the system or defraud the system. But another thing that I found was important was um, people not giving you the silent treatment. So if I've just hired you to do a project for me and I say, "Hey, how's it going?" and then I don't hear from you, you know, for two weeks or what have you, um, were those some of the problems you considered, you know, when you or some of the things you found when you're running the business? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Um... And yeah, that's a bad sign if someone is like, you know, for two weeks they don't respond. The person that's employing them is kind of like, hey, you know, I need to get this thing done. So um, we actually have a system where if the project is over a certain amount, the person is forced to report in every single week. And if they don't, you know, it sends reminders out and says, hey, you know, what's going on? Um, but the employer can just cancel if they want to, if the person doesn't respond on a timely basis. And so we do it. We built in a bunch of things to kind of protect against those sort of things. But we have a double blind rating system so that like you know like on eBay sometimes people kind of cheat with their ratings you know they're like hey if you give me a good rating I'll give you a good rating right. so so what what ours is is like so the first person places their rating they can't see what the other person does their rating until that person does it so they can't uh -huh. trade good ratings and at the same time if like say the other person didn't like them and gave them a bad rating mm -hmm. a lot of times on eBay if oh you gave me a bad rating I'm going to give you a bad rating you know they don't know what the other person did so that makes it real. That makes it a lot more secure. So they can trust the ratings. We've got like a whole set of guarantees and escrowing and arbitration to like we guarantee to the employer they're going to get their work on time uh, to the contract and the amount that they asked for, or they get their money back. And at the same time, to the entrepreneur or the worker, we promise the same thing. Well, if you do those three things, you know we're guaranteed you're not going to get ripped off. You're going to get paid. When you were putting the business together, and how much? Um how much of your business do you are you hands on with, and how much have you actually outsourced to virtual workers? I am pretty hands on. Um, maybe I shouldn't be as much. I don't know, but uh, you know, it's like every day I'm doing something different. Like today, you know, it was like marketing, and yesterday I was working on the IT side, and you know, the day before in sales. So it's like there's always something going on. It seems like so I I, I enjoy what I'm doing. So you know, so that's pretty good. And yeah, I use the virtual workers all the time because I mean, we, we are a company. You know, we, we've experienced success in that we're like a company of 15 people, but we actually compete against companies with 100, 180, you know, people. There's no way that we could do that in the old scheme of doing things. So we have to use our own services basically, and we've got programmers, and we've got designers, and writers, and marketers, and you know, I, I definitely we take advantage as much as we can. Right. So I, I want to get into two um, two separate but still connected chunks of, of the business part of your uh, doing your job. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I want to know what are some of the most challenging aspects of the actual business side of doing the business. So the management or the technology. What's one of the biggest challenges you face? First off. Okay. Uh, it probably actually, it's kind of management related. It's like fraud. Okay. Fraud is like a really tough thing to deal with because... Can you be specific? These, sure. So all these people coming in on the internet are all anonymous. 
you don't really know who they are. Okay, they come in and they'll create an email address, but anyone can create a Gmail or whatever. Mm -hmm. So um, what people will do is, I'll give an example of, of type of fraud people will do. So they'll come in, uh, someone that, that wants to cause trouble, you can, you can go on the internet, you can buy a fake credit card number for like 10 cents. Mm -hmm. It's like nothing. So you could buy you know, hundreds of these. And so what these people do is they'll go in and they'll, they'll try the fake credit card on a site. And if the site takes it, and normally they will because these are freshly stolen credit cards, you know, they'll buy as much stuff as they can for it before the credit card company gets the report that, hey, this is stolen. Mm -hmm. So that's what the people do on our site. So they'll come in and they'll, they'll take a stolen credit card and they'll go, oh, you know, I'm going to you know, buy $5,000 worth of, of work. And maybe they're hiring a real person for get try to get five thousand dollars for free, but sometimes they go even a step further. They'll create a second fake account and pay themselves. Whoa, Whoa that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So you see, so it's almost like a way of using a credit card like an ATM machine, right? <laughs> <laughs> Stolen credit card. So how do you protect yourself from liability with that? Yeah, it's a huge liability because we've guaranteed to the worker they'll get paid right. even if we get ripped right. off. Right. So and I saw yeah, that posted yeah. on your site. Yeah, so, yeah. So, well, let me ask you this, a more specific question. Um, where and how soon into your business did that, that did you consider that as a problem? Did it pop up one day and you're like, hey, we got this problem. We didn't see we had it before, and now we have to deal with it. Or did you already kind of put safeguards in place before, before you? Did you step into the mud puddle, or did you see it when you were walking up the path? <laughs> I wish I had seen it. I stepped into it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, it was about a, a year into it, and all of a sudden I stepped in deep because it was like, so so we were starting to get some momentum, you know, starting to get some sales, and we got like a big sale. We got a thousand dollar contract, which for us was a big deal at the time, and so we get this thousand dollar contract. I'm like really excited, and then at the end of the month, I got a report back from the credit card company. They're like, oh, that thousand dollars that was stolen. That's a, a stolen credit card. I was like, whoa. Now we had already paid the the worker, so you know we paid the thousand and we'd gotten out of that about a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So now we have to give the whole thing back. So not only our hundred dollars, but nine hundred dollars from other projects that had gone through. And I was like, oh man! And there was nothing that the credit card company would do about it. They were like, well, that's just a price of doing business. So uh, you know, and then the next day I got another fax and it said, oh, here's another one. It's like seven hundred and fifty bucks. I was like, what? And over the next couple of days, like about five thousand dollars worth of these things came through, and wow. yeah, so I was like, oh, it keeps going like this. We're going to be out of business by the end of the month. Yeah, it's like there's there's no way we can survive, and so we had to come up with something fast. So uh, I, I sat down with my CFO Zoe, and we just were like scratching our heads, and we did as much research as we could to learn about these people and how they do what they do, and what they have, and what they don't have, and we came up with an idea. We were like, well. You know what? They they steal these credit cards. They don't really have these credit cards. What if we could ask them something that only someone that really owned the credit card would know? Uh -huh. And so we're like, well, you know what? We'll do. We'll make them turn over the back of the credit card every time they use us, and give us the bank phone number and who it is, and then we'll call that and, and see if it really matches up or not. Wow. And so so were, were you oh, literally doing that for each one, or keep continue your story? Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, that's basically it. So, so basically, yeah. So then we were like, so we we call every single person that does business on the site. It's a security verification, and uh, that verifies that they're real. And that's something you still do. So you don't um, automate that process at all. Well, it is automated in that we now have a program that can go and call people. But, like for example, a lot of people will have like an extension or something weird where they can't be contacted automatically. So we still have to have a human being that goes in there. A lot, a lot of times if, they, if they're overseas, the connection is real fuzzy and it doesn't quite work. So. Okay. So um, we got some of that out, uh, out of you. The, the next thing that um, I want to know is a, you're a business that's sort of a, a service-based business, but you're sort of a connector. So you take people from one end, like I said, the toll booth. You take people from one end of the... The, the, the road and people from another end and you sort of, they, they, they flow through you to connect to each other. What advice, because there are other similar types of businesses that do that. Mm -hmm. what, what sort of advice would you give for someone that's looking to either start a business similar to what you do or start a business that um, reaches some of the same people or have to do some of the same things? Yeah, like maybe they're trying to start a marketplace or something like that where they can right. bring together two things. Right. You know, it's it's challenging because there's kind of like, you know, which came first, the chicken or the egg? It's like you you don't have if you don't have enough people buyers, if you don't have enough buyers, 
if you're out of business. But even if you have the buyers, if you don't have enough sellers, you know you can't service them. And you, it seems like you can't get buyers if you don't have enough sellers. Um, I, the way that we did it, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily the way everyone would do it, is we, we, we just did it slowly. So it took, it took several years before we could build up enough critical mass that all of a sudden we were like, oh, that's a great place to go. You know, it probably took about two years mm -hmm. to build it up. Um, oh, go ahead. So what are some of the uh, marketing and, and advertising strategies you guys use now? Has, has what you've done before changed or are you still, as you've grown, are you doing more things and investing in different ways to, uh, to stay competitive and keep yourselves out there? Yeah, more things, all of that. So yeah, definitely doing more things, and also some stuff used to work and then it doesn't work anymore. It's like what did what did you learn that used to work that doesn't work anymore? Well, the for example, the Google ads. So so much more competition than back when we started, and more and more people are like, "Wow, this is a great opportunity. I think that's a great idea. I should start my own company that does that." And so you know, there, there's probably like 15 or 20 of them now, all competing for the same keywords. So we had to get really, really kind of tricky. And so what are you, for the really tiny ones? What are you using now that works? What are you doing differently to position yourself um, away from your competition and above them? What? So it, some people call it the long tail. So it's like you, you. A lot of times you can grab a lot of customers at the the high point, the short end of the tail, and really easily. But there's actually like a long tail of a whole bunch of little customers that if you could get all those guys together, it actually could be a, a whole business. So that's the strategy. So it's like rather than hitting all the people looking for Visual Basic Programmer, you know, now we get these just very tiny little little markets and we stitch them all together. Okay. Um, I just saw this. This is related. Um, I saw that uh, H&R Block, a uh, company like them, they're now using uh, virtual workers to, to basically allow their customers to schedule appointments to um, ask questions about their taxes. And because now they can do this, uh, virtually, they're able to do it not uh, year round. Also, um, and it looks like there are more businesses coming into that space. Do you see those types of people as potential clients, or do you see them as competition? Yeah, I actually see them as, as clients because it is difficult to create all that infrastructure. And a lot of times they just want the results. It's a lot easier for them as a company just to get the results rather than it's like they have to figure out how to pay all these people and half of them don't even have bank accounts and it's like how are you going to move the money around and how are you going to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and you got to manage them and you got to watch them. So I, I look at the growth of the industry as a positive thing. I'm, I'm glad there's a lot of interest in it because I think it is going to bring more clients. The backbone of your system is your your programming, your your software. Is is that yes. okay? Mm -hmm. um, is this something that you guys custom made, or did you start somewhere with, with something out of the box and then you customized it to your your thing, or did you write that? We we custom wrote it and we wrote it all. Um, I think if I was starting all over again, if I was someone today kind of doing a similar business, mm -hmm. I'd take advantage of. There's so much open source software out there, which is this free software that you can build on and you can you can get these things for free called content management systems, CMSs. And what they are is they will allow non-technical people to update websites really quickly. Right. And then you can build on top of these. It's a really cheap way. You know, if that had been around when we started, we would have definitely gone that route. Yeah. But it, it just wasn't. There's definitely a benefit to owning your own thing too because you can make it what you want it to be as well though. Yes, you can customize it, but I, with these these CMSs today, you actually can do both. So it comes with a kind of a base, but then you can change it to be however you want it to be. Okay. So it's almost like taking like the first year that we spent developing the, the plumbing and just starting with that for free. What do you? I, I imagine that because you deal with um, you're 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 basically putting employers uh, employers uh, together with entrepreneurs. Um, you probably can see a lot of trends or a lot of hot spots based on who's needing what service or skill. So what have you seen trending in the last, I don't know, two years? Like what, what are people asking for? What kind of skills, what kind of projects um, are they needing done? People are really loving apps, like iPhone apps and stuff like that. It's like everybody is either creating one, or, and a lot of people are making a lot of money because they are the, the ones that know how to create them. It takes a little bit of specialized knowledge. So 
apps, mobile apps, things running on the phone, that sort of stuff is huge right now. That's definitely the biggest trend. So if, if let's say I'm an entrepreneur and I want to, you know, jump into selling my virtual skills or if I need to recruit some virtual skills, uh, I better, I'd better learn about making apps. Is that right? Well, I mean, th there's all sorts of ways you can make money. So I don't want to say that that's the most popular where it's like the mm -hmm. biggest growth. I mean, people can make money doing th There's people that make money just researching things on the internet. Wow. So you know what I mean? So it's like people make money in all sorts of strange little ways. But, um, yeah, if someone is, is like, let's say that they are, they have the ability to create apps, they're, they're golden. What's one of the, uh, more, uh, I'd say weird or strange, um, skills you've either seen someone offer or uh, heard some seen someone ask for oh we, we get a lot of weird asking for things in fact uh we have to weed out some of them because yeah, they're what, a little bit too what weird. kind of stuff do you not do like what 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 what's forbidden or banned you know there's basically anything that's illegal and people mm -hmm. are a lot of times will say hey you know what um i'd like to create this virus because i'm going <laughs> to stick it on this person's computer <laughs> Or they'll be like, I need someone to break it. into this to get this bank account or, you know, whatever. And we're like, okay, we can't get involved in that. Well, how do you weed that stuff out? I mean, if you don't have someone actually um, reviewing that stuff in real time, is it the software that looks for certain keywords that's, that flags it for you? It's both. So there's software that looks for bad stuff that we know is bad. But then we actually do have a person that goes in and looks at every single one of them because in the end, the software is not perfect. How many employees are in your business? So just 15. Okay. So we actually are pretty small. Okay. Where um where do you see you guys where do you see your growth? Like where do you see yourself going um in the next few years? Like where are you trying to get to or have you already reached it? Uh, I mean, we're, we're oh, definitely I'm happy with where we are, but I guess you can never be content, you know. Mm -hmm. Totally. There's always like a next goal. I really see us moving into it's like okay, right now we do English and there's so much opportunity for Spanish, you know, all these different things, all these different languages across the globe, they really don't even know about this idea. I talked to someone who was in France, and he was like, oh, wow, what a great idea. They never even really heard about it. So there's a lot of opportunity there. We'd love to get into that. Um, is there anything that you've tried in the last few years that maybe didn't work, or have you pretty much stayed with, with your, your, the thing you're doing? Oh, I'd love to say that everything worked, but no, probably, you know, 50% of the things, we're always trying to experiment. I'm always trying to try new things to see if these things will work. And or a lot of times it kind of starts off as something that doesn't look like it's going to work and then kind of tweak it. Like uh, this, the latest thing that I was working on is this thing called a Sherpa. And the Sherpa is like, a Sherpa is someone that guides somebody up a mountain, like a guide. And so the idea is, hey, if you don't want to have to manage the people that are doing your work, the Sherpa will handle it all for you. So they'll just deliver it for you at the end. And uh, so many people would ask for it. I thought it was just going to be this easy thing. You know, we added it out there. And uh, there were just a lot of problems at first. Uh, people didn't quite understand how it worked. The Sherpas didn't understand what their job responsibilities were. They were kind of acting a little bit more like workers. And uh, at first, it was, it was pretty ugly. It probably took about a year to get it to the point where, okay, we're, I'm happy with this now, and it's starting to grow. So it actually ended up working out for you in the end. Yes, that was, that's one that worked out in the end, and now the Sherpa Sher program is a huge growth spot. Can Can you give me maybe some of the big steps or, or some of the the finer detail points of what you did to turn that situation around and make it work? So a situation that wasn't working, what did you do differently? I I guess the first thing is I just went in and tried to find out as much information as I could. So not making any assumptions because obviously if 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 my assumptions were right, it would have worked perfectly the first time. So obviously, you know, I, I don't know everything. So I kind of go in there with an attitude of a little humility, and it's like, okay, w what's going on here? And so I, in this particular case, like I talked to every single one of the customers. I talked to the Sherpas. You know, I just talked to miscellaneous people. Like, you know, what if you're in the situation, how would you feel? And just gathered as much information I could, and then I identified, okay, here's where the problems are. It's like, wow, they're not communicating. Some of these Sherpas don't seem to really understand what they're supposed to be really doing. And they, they don't really, they're great workers. They may have completed like 500 projects on the site, perfect 10 record. Many of them were like that. But, you know, they don't necessarily have the skills to, to manage. So we're going to have to like teach them these before we can like turn them loose. So how do you go about teaching them? 
So what what I did was a bit well. So like it was like the same process. So it was like okay, identify what does it take to really manage a process, manage a project successfully, and bring it to completion. Find out all the different typical mistakes, and then now there's like a manual mm -hmm. that we have. It's like it's pretty long. It's at least it's probably about sixty pages of like what they're supposed to do. And the Sherpas, they they're part of your organization, or is that like a position that can be um, done through vworker.com? It is both. So we, we do take new people who want to apply for it okay. and want to become a Sherpa from the outside world, but we also have people in-house too. Okay, so basically, let me clarify it so I, so I understand. So they're basically project managers for other virtual workers, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So okay, if you're a okay. customer and you don't want to manage yourself, because it is kind of a hassle, you got to right. check in on people and all that, that's what right. they do. Right, I got you. Um, so let me ask you this, because I want to... Um, I want to we're going to bring it to a close, but I want to, I talk to a lot of people and I know a lot of people that have really, um, they're really good. They have amazing skills. They have, um, you know, skills that anybody could use if they were in the right situation, but maybe they can't find the type of employment they want. So if I'm someone that wants to become a view worker, can you give me maybe the, the, your best four or five tips um, for how someone can come to your, your, your site and use it as a tool and be successful. You know, how can they be a top yeah. virtual worker? That's a good question. So, so first, if if they are the type, of, I would recommend you know they got to be the type of person that's willing to communicate and do all those sort of things. But then they come in and create a profile on the site, and it's really important. A lot of people just kind of just throw it out there or whatever. It's important to take the time. The, the profile is almost like a resume, you know. So it really needs to highlight experience. It, and but the thing that differentiates a good one from a bad one is everybody just always says, "Oh, I'm wonderful." You know, I, I've done this and I've done that. Mm -hmm. But real life examples of a profile. So I tell people, look, if if you are going to be a designer, show them pictures of things that you've done. So in the profile, you can actually upload different examples of things that you've designed. So you're showing an example there of. Uh, Let's see, going through the newest projects and things like that. So these are the sort of things that uh, that they would be looking for. Mm -hmm. But uh, so so you know, set that up right. Spend a lot of time kind of refining the bidding process. So I'd recommend going in and uh, asking intelligent questions on on projects. Don't be just like so many people come in and they think, oh, well, I'm just going to post the same thing on every job. And if I do enough, if I do a hundred of them, you know, I'll, I'll get five. And then from that, you know, I can I can make a living. And what happens is these employers just end up kind of, you know, blocking those out. So really what they need to do is on each, customize each one, show interest, ask intelligent questions, and it's a presentation. It's really all presentation. If you can pre present well, that's what will make someone successful. Do you notice that um, there are certain things, uh, let's say a programmer, who just does web stuff versus someone who does mobile stuff versus someone who does graphic design? Do you notice that um, the most, the ones that get the most work, do specific things or have specific traits that you say, hey, if everybody does what she does, you'll get um, a lot of requests or a lot of a lot of jobs? Yeah, yeah, well, definitely. I mean, other, in addition to the things that you just mentioned, because what you mentioned was yes, a yeah, yeah. Well, no, and then you're right. There's more. Um, I, I would say. So many people actually, it's actually not so hard to get a job as it is to do the job right and then get right. the good rating that enables someone to charge more. So you can, okay, so, you get another job, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's, you know, the key. That's what you're, someone's looking for. They're tra you're trying to do well, get the rating, raise the rates. Okay. So uh, the key there is really, it's kind of like a certain type of discipline. Okay, someone is working from home. They're not in an office. It's in an office, you come in in the morning, there's like a routine, you know, you're expected to do things at a certain time. Working from home, it's not like that at all. Right. So it's like you set your own hours completely and certain people just aren't up to it. It's like if, if they're the type of person that's going to like, okay, go to the computer and they're like, oh, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with that personal email or I'm going to like go over, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to balance my checkbook, I forgot to do that, you know, mm. it's like, it'll never work. So it it has to be someone that it can just kind of set aside all that stuff and just really really focus despite all the temptations and the distractions. Um. So now, if I'm an employer or if I have a project and I need help on it, um, what what are some of the things that I need to look out for? What are some of the things that I can do to make sure I get the best talent and 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 have them do a good job? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, 
looking for like the opposite of some of the things that I said earlier. So in other words, like uh, you know, w w we tell people just ignore the ones where people just spam and they send out some sort of generic bid. Look for people that are showing that they actually read and understand what your project is, and that have asked intelligent questions. Mm -hmm. And because then you can trust. Oh, well, the bid that they placed probably is accurate versus someone that just throws a number out there and okay, they win it, and then now it's too low, and then they end up you know abandoning the job. Uh, one of the other things that's really awesome, it's kind of a new feature for this, for, there's some employers that it's just too confusing to figure out who to pick. Even after all this, they might end up with like five or six and they're really not sure. So we have this thing now that we call, uh, it's basically a contest. So it's like if you've got five or six people and you don't know who to pick, you can say, okay, hey, hey, all of you, I'd like to throw out a contest prize for you. Uh, I'm going to give for you, say, that, say it's for a designer, for a logo design. It's like, uh, throw me your best shot and um, you know, take take like twenty minutes or whatever. Create something that impresses me, and the winner's gonna get five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this this motivates them to like really try their best and show what they can do. And then once they actually show it, then you know who to pick. That's that's awesome. That's a really good tip. Um, I want to ask you this. Another question as far as uh, being an entrepreneur and running your own business. What what have you learned over the last few years that you didn't know before? That, like you had said, hey, if I'd known this ten years ago, I'd be, you know, um, done it a lot faster. So, what what have you learned in say the last four four years? I'd say th things rarely work work out the way I've expected. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's really important to not take it personally when things don't work out and be flexible to change. And I th I really think the key is. Not even being, you know, people go, oh, that entrepreneur is so brilliant or, you know, whatever. It's not even that. It's just the ability to kind of notice things, kind of be a little bit humble, go in there, notice what's real versus what you think is real, and then have the persistence to stick with it and actually make it into something that works. I think if someone has that persistence and can do that, that's like, that's really what it takes. Awesome. Awesome. So, Ian, um, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. And uh, I think we got a lot of valuable um, information, and, um, and and your site looks really good, man. Like I think Thank it's you. something that that I think people should go there and they should um, you know register. And if they've got a skill and they want to pick up, even you know if they want to pick up some extra work or just change their career around, you know, and and work for themselves, I think that uh, they should check out vworker.com. Well, thanks. It's a great place to go for someone doing that. They can build up a nice resume and reputation. So I'm going to give you the last couple, uh, 15 to 30 seconds, and, um, you know, if there's anything else that you, you'd want to say or, um, you know, have us do, then let me know. All right. I mean, there's pretty much nothing. First, thanks for the uh, invitation and the ability to talk to you and your audience. It's been a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, uh, we, I think we pretty much covered everything. But, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for people, especially, like you said, who are trying to – trying to find something new and uh, I've heard so many stories of people they were like oh you know I, I ended up getting hired because of my vWorker profile or I met the person who ended up hiring me on vWorker so a lot of good opportunities all right well thank you a lot, a lot Ian and um, you guys check out vWorker.com and we'll talk to you next time <laughs>